Yeah, I think we are live now. Yes. Hi, Avanti. Hello, Nidhi. Hello. Hi. One minute. Yeah. I'm just going yeah. to see we are live now. Yes. Yeah, we are live. That's on now. Hi, Avanti. Hello, Nidhi. Hello. Hi. I'm sorry, I just had to set up. Yeah. Okay, I think we are good now. Um hello everyone. Uh, thank minute. you so I'm much John, yeah. for joining. Yeah, we are live now. Yes, yeah, we are live. It's on now. Hi everybody. Hello, Hello. Hi. That's an echo. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that, I'm, I'm just, just trying to figure that out. Give me a minute. Okay, I think we're good now. Um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so I'm much for joining. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello, this is on Facebook. No, I don't have my Facebook open here. No, I think um, it was echoing because we had uh, the Facebook open. <laughs> yeah, I think um, we're good now. Uh, <laughs> So sorry about um, the technical glitch. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining live with us uh, today on uh, the 13th episode of Everlast. Uh, so uh, while we have people joining and I think we're just having uh, people to join in, uh, I'll give a quick uh, brief about um, AllServe and the initiative Everlast. AllServe is a senior assisted services living platform. So we cater to um, various uh, daily needs for seniors. Uh, so uh, we have um, uh, home cooked food, groceries, uh, healthcare, um, medical, and um, uh, we have concierge and various other housekeeping services. So so Everlast is um, uh, one of the initiators of also. So uh, it's actually uh, technically designed for um, uh, seniors. It's a social engagement platform for seniors who otherwise are not, not able to go out in public and um, take part in social events. Uh, but um, considering the situation, I think uh, it's open to all age groups, not just for seniors. We have topics, um, various topics, right from music, dance, uh, wellness, fitness, um, and nutrition, and various other forms of art storytelling. We had like a storytelling session last week. So we have been having like with diverse topics um, uh, in this space. So today we have um, Avanti Natarajan with us. Uh, so Avanti is a renowned um, uh, watercolor artist and she's an architect by profession, but uh, she's into various form of arts. I think uh, music, dance, um, illustrations, digital art, I mean like what not. She is like um, a personification of art. She's into various forms of art um, and uh, she runs this art brew uh, creative company which she co-founded um, it's a design studio and along with that she also runs little trails which is uh, for nurturing uh, education and also um, uh, holistic activities for young children uh, and above all uh, she's a mother of four-year-old toddler <laughs> so uh, we're so happy to have you with us Avanti. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Nideta. Actually, uh, I have to thank Alsa for giving me this opportunity. So thank you so much and for the beautiful introduction. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. So how did art become part of your life? Like, was it always uh, uh, in you? Like, you always wanted to get into this field or like, were you an artist right from your childhood days? Or what was your motivation? Yeah, I think art was with me uh, all along right from my childhood. I was that kid who used to carry a note and pencil wherever she goes on a vacation or a long drive anywhere. I was that kid. So um, uh, architecture was my dream. Like uh, the seed to pursue architecture actually uh, 
start started when I was doing my eighth standard. Okay. Uh, when my dad took me to Tanju Temple, and I was asking him, "What should I study if I want to build something like this?" And he said, "Maybe civil engineering." And after a few days, he came back and he told me, "Actually, there is a course called architecture, which is specifically for designing buildings. Maybe I think you can pursue that." From then on, architecture was my dream. I think pursuing architecture uh, in my undergrad as well as my post grad. made sure that art was always a part of my life uh, but uh, watercolor is one medium uh, which i was not very confident about but now actually watercolor is what actually go, uh, give actually gave me an identity as an artist so yeah mm-hmm. i watercolor actually got into my life uh, during my pregnancy when i was carrying my daughter Okay. I was uh, having hyperemesis what uh, vomiting sensation and all that so I was asked to take bed rest. And for a person who was super active who was on her toes all the time being at home was the biggest challenge. Sure of course. Yeah, that time randomly my husband presented me a watercolor set. I had no clue about what sort of brush I should use, what sort of paper I should get, GSM and all that I had no clue about that. But to me I started painting to get out of something to get out of my frustration for being at home all the time and even though my paintings initially were absolutely were not very good but it made me really happy uh watercolor as a medium is very unforgiving uh unlike oil or acrylic where you can keep on building layer on layer or even through mistakes you have days to correct it but at times uh, you end up ruining 2 to 3 hours of painting just by a small mistake in watercolors but to me i started painting to just make myself happy i was uh, also being consistent i had time during that point of time i think it really made me to get better at that medium and everything changed when i got a call from a person from kamato from a design school and they asked me to conduct a workshop and that changed everything and uh, in, in two years i have taken along around 20 to 25 workshops and uh, Uh, we also co-founded the art group creative company myself and my husband where we do art architecture and design where we interpret art in both architecture and design yes that's like- wonderful wonderful <laughs> that's lovely i think um, see we it's also about the support that you get from your family so i think like uh, these days uh, though we have like a set of people who actually it's not like older days where uh, we take up engineering and then like we go into a corporate job but now like uh, so many people are actually coming out of the shell and doing pursuing art but we also have like a set of people who actually still think about like pursuing art um, as a full time or like even pursuing any kind of uh, passion so what kind of advice or how do you suggest them to pursue with their passion because in your case i mean like it also became a part of your uh, uh, i mean like your main stream but then um, you actually like little deviated and then you start off with watercolor and like we we know you actually for your uh, fantastic work in that space so how would you suggest a one to start off with that see for someone uh, usually once you're done with your school life you actually have a break with all your hobbies uh, or with your passion the professional life and family life actually takes over and you rarely find time for yourself this all begins with one basic point time for self the self love and self care especially women i think once you get married or not just married once you get into a, even in a professional life uh, we always tend to give importance to the work we have to finish for others and we end up not caring in about ourselves so i always believe be it men or women to at least give half an hour time just for yourself true See, we may we may all come from different background we may all have different support system giving time for yourself may also mean that extra push you have to give for yourself true in my case i was always a night owl i always used to work uh and pay whatever i have to do in productive ways i always used to be a night owl and i used to work during my night hours but after my daughter everything completely changed because uh once you uh, have your child everything revolves around them okay. so and yeah even i had to have take a break when i was busy with my professional and my family life but at some point of time i i was very sure art is the only thing where i'm going to take the energy for the whole day so what i do is like i wake up early If my daughter gets up by say six thirty, I make sure I wake up by four forty-five or five in the morning. I do my workout and I paint. 
So that's how I somehow fit in my passion in the whole day. Okay. So finding that time would be the first step for someone to start. And then these days you have a n number of resources which are available online. Sure. Being YouTube, you also have a website called Skillshare dot com, where uh, especially just specifically for all the creative and art related uh, tutorials. So all the resources are free and open, even in YouTube. So you and these days many art workshops are also uh, being conducted online, as well as in some cafeterias. Maybe in this pandemic situation, I see a lot of online art workshops. Maybe you can join one or two and figure out what is your calling, and then slowly. get into the way true i think time and also like the interest uh, if you have an interest like you you will find ways to do it but like for someone who has like no experience but uh, they still want to start up with, like in your case you mentioned that during your pregnancy it like watercoloring is something that you like ended up uh, finding uh, yourself with so how how would you suggest someone to actually try out different things it, it might not be painting but uh, how would you suggest someone to actually venture into something new new form of art uh, if it all like they want to see if it works for them see one thing i understood is uh, art is never about creating something perfect it's about just letting oneself to flow there is no right or wrong way in, in uh, any form of art in that case it's all about what you perceive as that art form and what you experience in the process part good yeah So that's how I define it. If we don't have that judgment factor, and if we don't have that uh, daunting factor of judge uh, of judging our output, once what what is going to be the, our output, and we just let ourselves flow and take that effort to just do some random strokes in the paper would be a great start. True. Very nice. So, um, as a beginner, like a lot of people, especially like seniors who are watching this space, um, uh, if you were to give some tips and also like small techniques uh, about like painting, because I think now in this scenario, like a lot of grandparents, seniors, they actually uh, connect with their uh, children, grandchildren more because of the lifestyle of the parents. Obviously, like um, they're more connect with uh, uh, the children from the grandparents. So, if they want to. like start of something new just to keep them engaged with their grandchildren do you want to give them some tips and also like where do they start and how do they start um, uh, to keep them engaged to keep themselves engaged and also like teach their grandchildren uh, new techniques so how where do you start yeah i thought i will show you one or two techniques one or two simple sure. techniques how to start with it maybe if you take watercolors the one important question what other people ask me also what sort of material should i use correct yeah paper should i go for expensive stuff artist grade stuff see i always tell even in my workshop to all my students all you need is the basic camlin and camel artist grade uh, artist grade paint that is more than enough for you to get started even the brushes go to a local art store basic brush because you are just starting into you are venturing into it so in the beginning it is all about experiencing and experimenting so just use the basic materials whatever you have just with the paper make sure you get some decent gsm the thickness that's what we we call it as gsm in uh, art fraternity so it will be around at least 300 gsm or 420 gsm 300 gsm would be ideal so if you get that and the three primary colors red yellow and blue if you get these three colors that's it you can go on and on and on creating your own shapes maybe i can demonstrate that definitely yes and uh, to uh, the viewers who are watching um, we would probably request you to also take some paper or any paper works avanti yeah for now if you have uh, even a4 sheet that works but usually okay. for watercolor you get watercolor papers from uh, stores like hindustan online uh, art lounge and all that where you can get 300 gs of watercolor papers Okay. So, so today, like, it could also be ready with like a, a watercolor or any color that you have, and also um, a paper to begin with. Uh, we can do along with that. Yeah. Our, yeah. Just taking the three primary colors: yellow, red, and. So see, I just have these three colors. You're going to see what are different shades I'm going to create by mixing all these three. 
show the grandchildren and both of them can create one one new colors and they can qualitatively spend their time okay at the end of it they are also teaching the little ones about color theory so these three are the primary colors i'm going to mix uh your videos uh stopped um haven't they uh, not able to see it Now, actually, your video is also stuck. Not sure. Um... Just in a minute, I'll try to come up. Can I put you a different point there? She's working. Yours is not working. Okay, I think it's just mine is not working. So I think we can just continue. Yeah, is that fine? Yeah, yeah. I think we can just continue. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm just going to take a tad bit of yellow and going to mix it with red. So I'm getting an orange. I'm going to take a tad bit of yellow and mix a bit of blue. Now I get a green. Then you mix red and blue. We end up creating purple. Wow! Look, three different shades which you created from the primary colors. So obviously these are the secondary colors. I'll also show you how by uh, changing the ratio of colors you are mixing, you also get different shades. Looks beautiful. Yeah. So, see, we had the lighter shade of green. Now, look at the darker shade. So, this is one such activity where you can keep on uh, playing with your grandchildren, or you, you yourself can do it. You can try creating new shades, and so creating gives always gives you a joy, right? Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think it's so good to see like different combinations that you get out of these colors. Yeah, just three colors. Uh, I would say even if you want to invest in a good artist grade paint, always buy initially just the three primary colors. So then you can end up creating different shades. Beautiful, beautiful. I think it's just my video uh, which is stopped, um, Avanti. Um, uh, yes. Can I yeah, it's just frozen. I'm I'm just trying to figure out, but I think we can just go on since your yeah, video is yeah. working. I think we can just continue. Um, it it. So, do you want to probably illustrate a painting for us um with these colors, like the, just the basic colors? Uh, we would like to see um how the basic colors can play. Uh, we can play around with these. Yeah, I would like to play a video. I have shot a video. Okay. Uh, from my morning routine where I always play music in the background and I just go on and on with my paints, paint and brush. So okay. Let me work with you all.
it looks beautiful so i'm just following facebook because uh, uh this is frozen so i think uh, the zoom uh, is frozen so i'm just seeing it from uh, Okay. Uh, book, yeah but it looks lovely like i mean it is a therapy by itself especially um i'm pretty sure like um the art especially like these kind of paintings would be like a therapy for uh, uh seniors right uh, sure. so i think um, yeah so how do you see it is um i mean like it's a way of de-stressing for uh, seniors but uh, how do you see it for people who are actually very happy in content already like um, uh, I, I mean like how do they begin um, uh, art or like uh, painting especially like uh, uh, these kind of paintings are something that um, I think everyone should uh, like initiate how do you uh, think they would uh, they can start with yeah See, art is not just for de-stressing or art therapy is not just for people who are in stress. Art can be a way of life. Art, I mean, not just paint and brush. It can be dancing, it can be music, it can be cooking. For someone, it can be writing. How we do everyday uh, physical workout for a physical body, I feel art will heal our soul and it will heal our mind. So like how I said in the mornings, Boy, when I do my workout, I think my physical uh, well-being is taken care. And every day when I do my art, I always feel my mental well-being is also taken care. And I feel I gain energy to run for the whole day from that half an hour. Very true. Nice. Yeah, I think that's a very different perspective as well. Um, I mean, uh, it's it's a great way to actually relax. It it also increases your concentration and your focus for the entire day, right? Like, um, it's so beautiful to see. We would like to see more of your uh, illustrations, um, Avanti. Yeah, I would also love to play one more. Sure, sure, definitely. I'm so sorry. I think my uh, only my audio is um. Heard. It's fine. I, I still see some issues. Of, there's some glitch. Wonderful, Avanti. I I think um, it, it's really beautiful to even see. But um, uh, do you actually uh, use any expensive um, um, art equipments or um, any kind of colors to, be, especially for someone who wants to take it up as a hobby? Do you uh, suggest someone to invest in uh, uh, like expensive equipments or tools? Like I would always say, uh, art art is great. Materials make a whole lot of difference. But okay. for beginners and for someone who's just doing it for a hobby, uh, mm -hmm. trying out in the beginning, the normal student grade paints are more than enough. If you really want to explore the next level, yeah, of course you can invest in artist grade paints. I would suggest uh, go for Winsor & Newton artist grade paints. They are really good. 
even a little expensive obviously because the pigment ratio is really uh, of high quality in them so maybe initially go for the three primary colors i have showed you how you can actually create all different shades just by mixing these three colors and one other brand would, would be uh, mygelo mission which is also really good for watercolors okay. but you know newton is invariably good in all other mediums too even oil acrylics and yeah wonderful wonderful um i think um, uh, we've seen about your art but uh, we would also like to hear about uh, little trails uh, i think um, a lot we've heard a lot about uh, little trails and how uh, it uh, creates a community for exchanging ideas for young children so tell us more about little trails little trails yeah we bought the domain that's like domain 4 years back okay for myself and my husband we Have to be with children, and once we had a daughter, we we tried different ways to teach her uh, to spend quality time with her. Okay. We always wanted to do something, some initiative related to kids, uh, but it took four long years for us uh, to start it one day during the beginning of this pandemic, uh, March seventeenth, I guess. Okay. And we had little. We thought uh, one of our major project got over at our door. We had little uh, off time that one week. and obviously the vacation is out of uh, hope now scope now so we thought why not we let us give some time and uh, we will start sharing our parenting experience with our daughter okay and we also ha- uh, have one more story uh, my da- daughter started telling stories and storytelling is one of her passion okay and the janaki aunty who actually uh, came as one of the chief i mean the guest speaker for the last week uh uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. for all of us in the family and we just adore her and we used to take Deera to almost uh, all of her storytelling sessions wonderful wonderful when we start and uh, Deera used to tell small small stories and I used to randomly I posted one day on Instagram and my inbox was flooded the next day okay I never wanted to give that sort of uh, an exposure to my daughter in the beginning even till now I don't post her photos or uh, pictures i mean photos uh, anywhere in the social media but when i got the heartwarming messages from uh, people who stay away from the family it made the day people who had a really rough and tough day uh, the story of deer actually put make put a smile on their face so i felt really good and i started sharing once in a while because i never wanted to force her to tell a story so whenever she's on a mood i used to record and i used to randomly put it in instagram and people started asking me when i started reading for deera what sort of books i read for deera and what sort of activities i do with her okay so we thought why not create a community of parents because in parenting there is like how i said in art there is nothing right or wrong way even in parenting all the parents want to really give the best to the children and there is actually there is no right and wrong way what what works for me may not work for someone else what works for me on one day may not work for me on the other day So every day is filled with surprise. Very true, very true. Especially like you've become a fan of though you have been shared a picture, but we have really become a share or a fan of your um, uh, stories, as in Dira stories, uh, because um, it's it's there on our highlights. So people who are watching this uh, space, uh, you should probably go check out um, Instagram and um, Avanti's uh, page uh, and her highlights. It's such beautiful stories. Like I just start. it on randomly with one and it's so cute and i ended up like listening to all of them it's so good uh, to hear such stories from me, especially like four year old like it's just, it's really good to hear such stories thank you thank you so much so when we started little trails at i think at third day or something we got a call from jani aunty she she said yeah. like schools are all closed in this why can't we do an online storytelling festival you know like we were thrilled to be a uh, uh, part of the storytelling festival so that's how it all started and we okay. did something called little community where we call experts who uh, specialize okay. in children and parent oriented topics and okay. to touch upon we had uh, um, people from print and uh, publication we had uh, pediatricians okay people we had fitness we we cover like a lot of topics and we also do uh, storytelling fest i mean events for children okay that's wonderful so is it only for children or also for the parents um, of our toddlers and uh, young children see though we name it as little trails so we believe little tra- trails is all, is for people who are always little children in the heart 
So even for the storytelling session, for a few sessions, we don't even specify the age limit because we okay. see grandparents, even parents enjoy the storytelling session. Okay, that was actually was going to be my next question because uh, obviously, like uh, seniors are young at heart, and um, uh, I was just going to ask if there are any plans to start something along the same lines for seniors. We do big tales from little trains. Uh, we do collaborate with Janaki and Tian for the for uh, our uh, storytelling even for adults too. We did the other Sita by Janaki and Tian few months back. We did two editions and it was all well received. So we have future plans too. Yeah, many uh, in the line. very very true very nice very nice so um i in fact like janaki aunty uh, she, uh, she was our guest last week on everlast and she mentioned about um uh, you and also about little trains and how um, there have been a lot of interactive sessions about um uh, storytelling and how she, you have been hosting a lot of um, uh, sessions both for children and parents uh, so uh, that's wonderful to hear so it's a, actually like a community of more uh, more than like um, just sharing ideas it's a community of um, exchanging and uh, also like it's not just stories but also various forms of arts right uh, yeah yeah we do uh, work on catch up on art and uh, learning for early learners and uh, through little community we have catch up on many topics that will actually benefit both children and the parent community Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so I we saw like a couple of your illustrations. Ah, uh, so ah uh, we always heard like music along. Ah, uh, so ah uh, what is that the combination of music and art? Like ah, uh, uh, I mean it it is so wonderful to actually hear uh, both together. It's a wonderful ah uh, combination. So ah uh, it, it's also like a fo form by itself. Do you actually think that as like a separate form of from um, ah uh, art? Like music yeah. and uh, like your painting. A synthesia where people paint according to the beat. But how it all started for me was see all of us need to unwind at some point of time. Uh, before before this pandemic, it used to be like uh, say a vacation or visiting your friends or family or a long drive with your family. But mm -hmm. pandemic, I think it put on it put a big question mark to all all those things. So unwinding in your own living room would be a good music and art. That's how we figured it out, and that's how the uh, tune to art to the tune series started. Okay, okay. Wonderful! It's actually very good to see like uh, music along with painting. It's 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 it it, it just adds uh, more beauty to your paintings. Actually, thank you so much. And at this point, I have to give due credit to all the wonderful musicians around mm -hmm. over there. I think Karthik, who also have been one of the guests during Alsas, one of the uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I I either used to listen to his music or Staccato Live Band. Staccato Band is one of my favorite bands, and uh, uh, artists like Shreya Deenath, pa, uh, Praveen Parsh. There are wonderful music music musicians are there around us, and yeah, and I feel art and music goes hand in hand. Definitely, I think it's a wonderful way of expressing your emotions. Like you know, if you're drawing something like uh, so so soothful as some um, uh, flowers, I think the it just complements the music. Just complements with it. Yeah, and I would also like to show one simple technique where you don't even need brush or any other room for like uh, an expensive an expensive tool to create something beautiful. I uh, threw a blow blow painting. Blow painting is something where you splash uh, paint on the paper and you use either straw uh, to just blow and create some sort of form out of it. I would love to show the technique here. Can I see? Yes. And also, people uh, who have just joined in, um, uh, we would probably invite you, everyone, to join in the demonstration and probably also ask some questions. Um, uh, if you are a beginner, especially if you have any specific questions that um, you would want to ask Avanti um, in terms of painting or any any uh, form of art, like you could probably drop in your questions, and um, uh, we would be happy to discuss it here. Yeah. So. I am drawing a flower pot. Okay. Okay. Who is drawing the pot? And what brush uh, is this, um, Avanti? Like, uh, I am using art essential, art essentials brush, but I 
also I would suggest you to go for Princeton or Escoda. But Art Essential is one uh, very good brand to begin with. Art Essentials. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you uh, use the same brush for um, all? I mean, like all your paintings, as in uh, the edge is the same, or uh, do you uh, change it according to your paintings? Uh, oh, the plant. So this is my brush collection. I, I think you can see some half of it. Okay. So we have round brush. We have uh, uh, mop brush. This is a round brush. You have mop brush. And I have flat brush. If I want to cover large areas, I have to do a background wash, I'll be using this. For smaller uh, details, I'll be using round brush. Uh, uh, maybe size, uh, this is size number 8. Maybe I'll be using 0 or 2, depending on what I draw. The type as well as the size of the brush values. Okay, okay. So here I am done with the simple part. Now, I'm just going to add some paint on top of it. I make sure my paint is not very thick in consistency. I'm adding more water to it because I want it to be watery. Uh -huh. So then when I do the paint, it flows seamlessly. Now I'm just adding some dabs here and there. Now, I, I'm just using a straw. I made my own straw using the paper. So now, okay. I'm adding a little bit of paint. So, Here and there. Wow. Okay, so you're just blowing on uh, on it, right? Yeah. See, you don't need expensive materials to do all this. Yeah. Now. yeah. Creativity. And just ex you can just go on experimenting with different themes. Uh huh. It just took me, say, two, three minutes or five minutes for the entire thing. Less than five minutes, yeah. yeah. But then yeah. again, it's so wonderful. I think it's a, it's a great way to teach um, young children um, art. I mean, like, you, it doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, it still looks uh, amazing. Yeah. I think we all, at some point of time, uh, should get out of this perfect, the notion called perfect. Exactly, yeah. Um, get out of it and once we let ourselves flow i think everything will fall in place very true very true such a nice painting uh, i think um it definitely helps people who are watching it um for the first time like if they want to venture into like painting i think it's a good place to start mm. And they can also like probably watch your videos, like your snip uh, videos that in fact, like uh, the videos or the paintings that you put up on Instagram, they look like so simple, but then it just looks so amazing. So I think it's a great way to start actually. Yeah. And in any field, like you all, you need one thing is, which is what is consistency. If you just have this practice as a way of like every day, you just spend half an hour's time saying, I think in a month you will see a tremendous progress, not just with art, with anything yeah. like this. Okay, okay. But uh, Avanti, you're into like art, mu I mean like you you are into music and you run companies uh, for designing and how do you manage, especially with a toddler, how do you manage so many things, especially at this time where like we also need to uh, take care of um, the household course and uh, especially when we are there at home. So how do you manage everything? How do you strike, strike the balance? I think it's all the family support and the partnership uh -huh. Partnership, I mean, uh, obviously, my uh, better half, as well as my parents and my in laws, um, and obviously, my little one. I yeah. think the support, the family support, makes a big difference in my life. And I also feel that little push which I have inside me. I always, I will always make time for If I really like to do something, I'm, I'm sure I'll make time for it. 
I also go for my dance classes with my daughter when I, uh, at least twice in a week. Uh, oh. It means, yes, uh, you have to get up really early in the morning. Some days it means also saying no to few things. Very true. Uh, and a lot of times, like we, I think especially it's our, um, uh, it's just like, a, or, a, or it's a notion that, uh, okay, no, so now no, no, it's not right now. It, I think it's just like a mindset of uh, for a lot of us, especially in our uh, community. I think uh, it's just a general notion that saying no um, is actually wrong. And we take up a lot of things on our head. I think stri to strike a balance, we should also be say uh, we should learn to say no. <laughs> Of course, I of course I was a person who will be like everything I'll say yes, okay. Then at one point I'll be like, oh my god, I have like too much in my plate, sort of a person. I used to be like that, but now I try. I I learn to prioritize things. Correct, correct, yeah. So you may like a number of things, but if you prioritize it accordingly, and sometimes when you really feel um, all tired and you really feel. You have to take a break at time to take a break for some time and uh, for a few days and then sit reflect and get back to the get back and prioritize i think things will work okay i mean do you actually take um uh, i mean do you do art or painting even on your bad days or how do you motivate yourself in uh, those bad days i mean i'm not sure like especially during this time everyone has like good days and bad days completely okay to have bad days but uh, how do you manage that i mean see uh Almost, I think, more than 10 to 12 days, I never had time uh, during the last month to pick my breath, paint, paint or brush. I had, like, uh, my work deadlines. I'm also pursuing my PhD in architecture, so I had my presentations and all of that. So, okay. uh, but when your passion becomes a burden, then I think you have to rethink. Because that's not the way it should work, right? True, true. It should be the place where you go to just unwind yourself. So at times you understand the fact, okay, this is what, this is not going to happen for a few days. That's fine because my priority for now is going to be work on my uh, presentation. So I have to work on that. So if you have that mentality in your mind, I think that will work. And yes, of course, if I have a very bad day and I really need to unwind, then I definitely paint on that day. And uh, also, I understand if you have a routine, you can you you have to uh, follow it at times if nothing goes or goes according to the plan it's fine just sit to relax and again get back to your routine it shouldn't be a pressure on you oh my god i have i'm doing everything and everything should be right this plan a plan b plan c everything should go according to the uh, the, or, or the, the normal plan to pace it won't go because life happens life is like that especially in this pandemic where you don't know what is hap what will happen the next minute next day uh, you have to just go with the flow, I believe. So yes, That's I do. Like my routine is always there. The mornings I always paint. Mm -hmm. In a few days when I'm not able to paint, I agree. I accept that too and just go on and try to fix my routine on the next day. Very true, very true. I think uh, it's uh, it's all about like a little bit of planning uh, from your end and how you prioritize things. That also and especially as you said, like passion. Uh, if it is a passion, then it shouldn't be burdening for you. You shouldn't uh, change that into a burden. Uh, you should find ways to do it. So very true, Avanti. I, uh, during this pandemic, I think like a lot of us are doing uh, these kind of live sessions. I definitely we would want to see you in person and have like a workshop. Uh, but uh, how do you enhance your uh, skills and um, uh, especially during this time, we've been like um, uh, home for like more than six months now. So how do you enhance your skills um, and uh, keep in like keep up the momentum uh, in what you're doing? Uh, so I think that practice, that routine which you set in the morning, like half an hour routine makes a big difference. Like I said, the consistency will make your art also to get better in a way. But also learning, constant learning. See, okay. no one is uh, uh, a guru. Like, no one is like, okay, I, I, I can't say at any point of time, okay, I've learned everything in watercolor and I'm the master. See, everybody has to update themselves. And uh, I believe there are like wonderful artists there around and even Instagram, even online. I do go for workshops myself. I do attend workshops. And I also have this journal, art journal, where I try to do some sort of art every day. It can, it, no need for it to be watercolors. It can be simple doodling. Uh, it can be a uh, simple sketch, a random scribbling. Yeah. I think you, if maintaining an art journal and keep updating yourself in your field, 
will really help and that's how that's what i am following wonderful wonderful uh, we have a question from one of our viewers uh, so uh, ram murthy jagdish he wants to know what about other paints like oil isn't it more stressful to do oil and uh, more long lasting uh i don't think like all other all, all art mediums are equally uh, good for art therapy or to unmy yourself to me my calling was watercolors so that's how we found each other Okay. but oil and acrylic are equally good they they behave and uh, uh, the techniques are a little different but still art in any any medium i feel is best for you to unwind very true very true i think it's not just painting for that matter i think it it can also be like a music dance or uh, anything any form of art i think it's a wonderful um, therapy of for these yeah even it's mean just connecting two dots it is an art true yeah definitely i think uh, yes so uh, we've uh, almost come to the end, end of the session now uh, it was wonderful talking to you avanti a lot of um, wonderful um, knowledge that you have shared um, with us and um, your uh, different aspects of art um, uh, gleaned along the way so it's a so, so wonderful to hear that uh, hopefully uh, we will have a session in person um, uh, sometime very soon um, i think uh, it was wonderful connecting with you today avanti and thank you so much Thank you so much for the seamless interview, and I, I was very comfortable. And I should thank Rakesh from Alsa for this invitation, and I should thank you, Nivedita, for the beautiful uh, questions. And uh, my thanks also goes to Atul and all the viewers. I hope what I share today uh, would really make you to pick the paint or brush, or whatever you aspire, whatever whatever is your passion. Please spend some time for yourself at the end of the day. because only if you are if you are happy and uh, if your mental well being is good i think we will make people around us happy yeah self love is best always i guess thank you that's the great end self love is very uh, important uh, not just uh, for uh, like keep us uh, keeping us going but also for uh, like the we general well being i think um, it's uh, it's definitely very important uh, with that note um, i would like to say that uh, we have come to the end of uh, this season now uh, we've been having 13 um, episodes uh, and uh, we've come to the end of the season so we will soon come up with a new season now um, with different dimensions and different um, ideas uh, in in the coming week so until then uh, thank you so much uh, for watching